The last time she was here, she suffered from a bout of food poisoning, but that has not stopped teen star Cherise from trying out our local fare again this time round. Ladies and gentlemen, Cherise. All right, here we go. Dubbed by Oprah Winfrey as the most talented young girl in the world, and she's here with us. Have a seat, my friend. Sorry, I was singing. All right, good stuff. Oh. Sorry about that. Last time when you came down to Singapore, some fans were saying that you had some food poisoning. Oh boy. <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> but you still said you want to come back to Singapore, which you are here right now. Good. Yeah, that scared me. No, it was, um, it was a big drama, but <laughs> it was a big drama. Well, um, you know, because I was rushing to the hospital. Um, it was just because of the sushi. But <laughs> I, I have a background music right in front it of me. It was my because head. of the sushi. But still, after that accident, actually, after that whole drama thing, I actually still did the concert that night, the David Foster and Friends. So it wasn't big, you know, like, it wasn't really that big deal. It wasn't Are you brave enough to try out new food here in Singapore this time around again? I've been eating. Good. <laughs> Recently, there were uh, reports of cyberbullying, and you apparently deleted your Facebook account because of the cyberbullying. So, can I ask you? Um, it's a three-part question. So, first of all, why do you delete? Why do you decide to delete your Facebook account? Um, what kind of remarks were made, and how do you cope with the online nastiness? Well, um, I'm kind of used to it because um, even if, um, like you know, when I was when I was a kid, joining a lot of singing concerts and stuff, I actually had. Uh, you know, hard, um, the hard part of it, you know, like all the, the, the people saying a lot of negative stuff to yep, me. Yep. So this whole Facebook, you know. <laughs> You're talking about so, the competitions when they were yeah, singing yeah. contests back home, right? You know, like okay. some people um, were just like, eh, she's not good enough. Right. You know, she doesn't have the personality and everything. She's, right. not, she's never going to make it. So I'm right. just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> well, about my Facebook account, well, I'm... I just want to say, I mean, I have two Facebook accounts. Um, the other one is my official, you know, fan page, and the other one's just private. But the thing is, when I actually made that account, I just added, like, the people, like, I didn't know. I was just like, click, 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 click. So I had, like, 600 friends in that account. So I was just like, this is kind of hard, you know. It's kind of hard to manage a private account and the fan page at the same time. Yeah. So I'm like, I just want to maintain my fan page account, you know, like, instead of, like, both, you know, having, like, trouble, you know, like, you open this, you open that, you know. So I just decided to, you know, delete it because sometimes, you know, I, I actually added, like, some people just wanted to say stuff, like, you know, the negative stuff. So I'm like, oh, I didn't, you know, like, I just did a wrong decision making that, you know, private and just added the people that I actually didn't know. So I actually learned that lesson, you know, just... If you do a private Facebook account, make sure you just know the people. <laughs> so I just, you know, right now, just maintaining my fan page and makes me feel better. At a young age, um, according to your story, you saw your mom almost being strangled by your dad. How do, how do you cope with something like that? And how, how do you come to terms with, uh, you know, domestic violence, so to speak, at home and, and then that story altogether? It's, um, I mean, until now, it's still hard for me. Um, I mean, you know, every every single person, you know, wants a happy family, complete family, and it's hard for me to, you know, um, I mean, I'm happy that you know I have my mom and my brother, but it would be really amazing if I say, if I have my dad, you know. So um, it still affects me every time I remember, like, if I see something that reminds me about it. It still affects me, and sometimes I miss my dad. Sometimes I feel like I don't want to see him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I still want to thank him because, of course, I'm here, and he's my dad, right. and <laughs> he made me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm still thankful, but at the same time, I just wish that all the things that happened to me in the past, I... I just wish that that didn't yeah. happen. Bruno Mars, before it explodes. And you know, he's originally apparently from Cebu, the, uh, the ancestors mm -hmm. of Bruno mm -hmm. Mars, a.k.a. Pierre Jean Hernandez. How does it feel like knowing that, hey, there's another Pinoy brother 
from the U.S. who's actually worked with me and then wrote a song for me before it exposed. How did it come about? I uh, feel so blessed and, of course, proud. Um, first of all, I just, I just can't believe actually that, you know, I released this, you know, this song written by Bruno Mars, but I actually never met him. Ooh, I have not even on the phone. No, not even on the phone. We haven't talked and right. everything. Right. So um, I'm, you know, I'm just so excited. I'm just, you know, looking forward and hoping to actually meet him. And um, I just want to thank him for um, trusting me to sing the song. The song right. Yeah, right. and um, I love the song. It's one of my favorites. You know, it's right. very heartbreaking song, mm. but you know, you just, I just love the way he writes a song. You know, it's very deep, it's very hard, you know, breaking sometimes. Tell me about the story of Before It Explodes. I mean, uh, the, the, the song, the definition of that. What is the uh, the whole meaning of Before It Explodes? There was a song from, from Bruno Mars called Grenade. Seems it, like a continuation. I feel, yeah, I feel like... Explodes, <laughs> it should be Before It Explodes and Grenade, right? Or, I, I think, you know, I think it's, yeah, it's, I think it's Before It Explodes and then Grenade. Yeah, <laughs> you know, cause, Catch cause, grenade, yeah, Before It Explodes. Yeah, because the story of um, Before It Explodes is like... Um, you know, it's like you guys like sort of have like a big problem with your relationship, and it's like you gotta stop it. You know, like you gotta stop it before it before it explodes. You know, before um, it comes worse. You know, so um, it's sort of, of course, heartbreaking because um, you know, like you just gotta let it go. You know, I think Bruno Mars wrote the song, so meaning I I record songs, so meaning if if you know, like if. If I had somebody in my life, you know, the story would be like, I still love the person, mm -hmm. but I don't want to, you know, like, I don't want to continue the relationship because, you right. know, like, maybe there's something, um, like, there's a problem about that person, you know, or me, or whatever, so before it explodes. <laughs> if I would make it a playlist, it would be before it explodes, grenade, and then all by myself. Yes. That would be a funny segue Perfect. of the three songs. Before it blows, oh my gosh. <laughs> yep. What's, uh, what's keeping you busy besides your uh, stuff <clears throat> in, in Hollywood, perhaps, in Glee and all? Uh, tell us a little bit of uh, your I, uh, I mean, I've been working on uh, my second album, uh, which is coming out this fall. And, um, of course, the movie. It's wrapped a movie coming out next year, July. And um, it's called Here Comes the Boom with um, Kevin James and Salma Hayek. So, very excited. Um, there's some, you know, more projects, but obviously I can't say anything right now. Albums coming out this fall, and it's definitely way different than the first album that I actually released two years ago. Um, it's, you know, there there are more um, dance songs, and um, I just, I it's it's a bummer that I can actually I can't actually say a name right now, like, you know. Who I've been working with, but I'm so excited for you guys to see it because, um, of course, the the first name just came out Bruno Mars. So I'm excited for you guys to see the other names. So actually, you know, um, I, you know, who, you know that that I actually work with. So I'm very excited coming out this fall, and I actually did a music video for my song One Day. Nick Jonas, Jonas Brothers wrote the song, and it was actually so much fun because it was the first time that I actually did a lot of dance. So I'm excited for you guys to see it. So I did a little bit of uh, research about Soul Shock, one of your uh, producer cartoons, Jack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he tweeted saying, you make fabulous animal sounds, cats and dog, dog kind of <laughs> like sound. Okay. He tweeted about that. Okay. How did that actually come <clears throat> about? How did that happen? You were producing and he said, you make the most amazing animal sound. No, I, it's just... It's just me. It's just being me. I just love doing that. I just actually did that. And I was doing an interview there, and I just love doing that. Do you have someone, someone special in your life right now that you draw inspirations from? Oh! Uh -huh, there you go. My dog. What's the name of your dog? Chesky. No. Um, well, um, let's say. Well, right now, I just love what I'm doing. You know, my career and everything. And I love... You know, seeing, um, you know, the whole world traveling and everything, and we just have no time for the, <coughs> the, yep. the guys out there, uh -huh. whatever. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. People always describe you as the little girl with a big voice. So, what do you think about it? And is there any other way you want people to describe you? 
I think, I mean, I think it's cool. I mean, I love being called, you know, little girl, short or whatever, because short people rock. Small but terrible, something like that. That's right? why there's word like that, you know, short but terrible. But you know, uh, when I was actually on the set of the movie, so I was looking at the, all the stuff and I saw the sticker, and it, yeah, it says short people rock. I'm like, that's perfect. I want that. You know, I mean, I th- I feel proud because. Um, you know, I think I mean it's a compliment for me. It's not, you know, it's because because it, it's me. I'm short. You know, I mean, if 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 you know, if I'm tall and they say I'm short, I'd be like, what? <laughs> so if they say you know, little girl with a big voice, that's me. You know, I'm short and I love myself. I love who I am, and you know, I'm just gonna be, you know, just it's just me. I don't want to change anything. <laughs> There were two nominations out of, I think, the nine or the eleven on the Glee Music Awards that you were nominated for. And uh, how does it feel like, you know, uh, being nominated uh, for all those Glee Awards and knowing that you are a guest performer in Glee? You got in, although uh, in one sense, we know that uh, all the star characters were there as well. But you got your two songs nominated in the Glee Music Awards. How does it feel like, you know, knowing that those two songs that you performed, Listen was one of them? And uh, I think another song. Telephone. Yeah, there you go. How does it feel like knowing that your songs are there? You are in the in the league of all, all those nominations. Uh, it feels great. I mean, you know, it's such an honor to be really part of, first of all, part of Glee. And um, I just want to thank, of course, all the people who actually voted for me. And being nominated, it's definitely going to come true. So I just want to thank all the people, that, you know, um, works for Glee, behind, you know, all the people behind the Glee. And... You know, it's such an amazing experience. What is up with the makeup on Glee? They say uh, it seems like everybody's got a nice makeup on Glee, and there's a, your character seems to be uh, uh, differently made up, so to speak. It's like, uh, is it supposed to be like that? Is that the intention somehow? Because you are sunshine and Glee, and then um, the character is an exchange student, and uh, seems like everybody's made up. But there's a different kind. Why, why they're asking me is like, there's a different kind of. Uh, of makeup or, or of your appearance uh, on the Glee, especially when you perform with uh, the vocal adrenaline. Um, what's your, what's your uh, uh, reaction to that? They say you look different from the rest. Um, well, I guess the only thing that I have want to say, I don't know if that different is good or bad, but okay. I just want to say they did it. Okay. The makeup artist from Glee did it, and I don't. Obviously, I guess that's you know what Ryan Murphy. Want it yeah, so, yeah. you know. I was just like, you know, just do whatever you want, you know. And I, obviously, it's my, I guess it's my character, Sunshine. You know, no, like almost no makeup, just yep. simple, mm-hmm. you know, and um, just, just yeah, just, not so just full of painted, not so yeah, you know, like speak. put like a uh-huh. heavy makeup and everything. True, true. That's just. Just this is what they wanted. So Granted, yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, I can say like I don't like this makeup or whatever. So, who are the the most fun people to work with uh, in the cast of Glee? By the way, um, actually, I mean, I love all of them. Yeah. But uh, Leah Michelle is, yep, yep. you know, she's very sweet. Who's the one who tickles your tummy the most? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, but um, I think uh, my favorite person is Naya Rivera. I love her. Yeah, too. she, yeah, she plays. She's Santana. hot. Yeah. Sorry. Well, she's hot. <laughs> she is. Um, but uh, I love her because the first time I was on the set, she actually, like, I don't know, did some research about me. And uh-huh. she was just like, I wow. saw an Oprah and everything. And mm-hmm. then Mark mm-hmm. Salling was like, do you play any instruments? And she was like, yes, she plays guitar. I'm like, what? There How do you know that? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just, it, you know, impresses me because, I mean... They're so busy to actually do like research and stuff, but mm-hmm. I was really amazed by you know. Naya is a, is a trained dancer, by the way. Yeah. Very good. Uh, do you know if you're coming back for the next season of Glee, the third season? I actually um, don't know anything, you know, the details right now about the next season of Glee, but um, they're going to give me a chance to be part of it. I would love to be part of it again. So, um, yeah. Singaporeans like Filipinos, we love to sing karaoke, right? So yeah. we're all here, we like to do karaoke. Yes. Tips to sing like you, because my girlfriend has tried, you cannot hit your notes. Like, impossible. <laughs> so any tips for karaoke, like, you know, all like that? 
Is there like a is there like an oration or a, I have to squeeze a body you know, part some kind of a, oh boy magical uh, a tonic or I, I don't know there's any no, magical there's no herb magic I think I mean I don't I don't know I don't know what tip you know I mean he just <sighs> dang it I mean he's just <laughs> I just saying you know I mean of course there's some. There's some, you know, words that I can act, you know, I can actually say. Like you use head tone, half head tone, or whatever, you know, to musical, uh, yeah, professional music style, chest yeah. or whatever. Chest <laughs> depends, actually. But um, sometimes, you know, like yeah, you use some techniques when you sing, especially high notes, you know. And obviously, if you're a guy, you're not supposed to sing. My song is kind of hard. Unless I'm Kurt. I, actually, I yeah. mean, even me, it's right. hard for me. Right. So I cannot actually tell if you if you would sing. <laughs> I mean, unless you sing in a lower octave. <laughs> so uh, I guess that's just the best tip. There are tons of people out there who draw inspiration from you and how you become such a success at such a young mm. age. Do you have any advice for the next person that becomes the next phenomenon? I mean, how do you deal with it personally? All that fame, all that rush, all that success. Um, um, of course, I have you know all these people around me. They they always you know tell me to just keep my feet on the ground. Um, you know, David Foster, Oprah, everybody. Um, I'm just so thankful that I have them. And um, you know, if if there's somebody, you know, Asian or whoever, you know, the next big. You know the next big thing. You know, I just wanna say that it's never gonna be easy. It's just it's always you know like there's always gonna be the hard part, and you just have to be ready. You know, there's just some negative stuff that's gonna happen in your life, and you just have to deal with it. You know, like once you're in, you just have to deal with it. Um, well, I'm very thankful. First of all, of course. Um, to God, you know, for all the blessings and, um, I, you know, all the inspirations, you know, um, my uh, family, friends, fans, and obviously I want to thank all the people who supported my first album, um, who, you know, all the people who bought the album, and um, I just can't believe it, you know, of course I'm very proud to be in Asian, you know, I used to say like I'm proud to be Filipino. Of course, yes. Yeah, but um, of course, yes. <laughs> yeah, but of course I'm proud to be Filipino. But you know, I'm even more prouder to actually, you know, be an Asian and just represent. Well, I think, I mean, if if I just mention, you know, like all the, you know, really famous Asian Hollywood stars, stars yeah. you know, like Jackie Chan and whatever, you know, like. Um, all the Asian stars, you know. Rob Schneider, Vanessa yeah. Manilio, you know. Yeah. But who else do you have playing on the uh, Cherise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, well, I, for, well, I don't know her, but I'm just saying. Well, for one, you you have uh, been cast on Glee. That's quite big. I mean, uh, every developed country in, in in Southeast Asia, from Korea, Japan, um, here in Singapore, it's would, pretty amazing. Would love to have that spot, and then you got it. I mean, I think it's pretty am amazing that, you know, like a lot of, like the Far East movement, you know, most of them are Asians. And now, you know, they have Top 40 hit in the U.S., yep. you know. It feels great to, like, every year, not every year, you know, we never know, like every month or whatever, there's, you know, always an Asian. Jay Sean? Yeah. Uh, um, you know, um just you know you see this you know you, you you just see them in the states and you just feel proud you know and i think that's why that's why you know um that's why when i actually got discovered and i i always want um i always want to be like i always want them to realize that we you know like all asians are very talented and i want them to recognize you know like recognize it and be able to um, appreciate it and just show you know people around the world that we got swag yeah there we go